you guys ever feel like 2K is purposefully sabotaging their game? Because it'd be some stuff that I swear got it is simple fixes, but yet it's still broken three months into the game's launch. It doesn't add up. It's almost as if they took every single person working on the game and moved them to NBA 2K20. So there's not one person left still trying to fix NBA 2K19. And Lord knows we need more than one person. There is so many things wrong with the game. It's, it's a good game foundationally, and I enjoy it infinitely better than 2K18. But what kind of compliment is that? That's like telling an NBA player, hey, there's a lot of things wrong with your form, but at least you're a better shooter than Ben Simmons. It's like, yeah, you kind of have to be. It's very, very challenging to be worse. But hey, man, uh, let's take the positives where we can get it. There's some stuff that was fixed in the game. Now, if you've been paying attention on Twitter or on YouTube the last couple days, there's a glitch that got really popular. In literally one to two hours, you could have got all your Hall of Fame badges and your personality badges, period. And so there was a lot of people interested and there was thousands of people doing it. Now, anytime there's that many people doing any glitch, the chances they get banned is very little. Because if the glitch is low key and not many people know about it, then the chances you get banned a lot higher. 2K is not gonna ban 5,000 avid daily players on the game. They just won't do it. It doesn't even have anything to do with morals. It just has to do with those guys spend money on the game. So the pockets is gonna hurt if you start banning all the people that play it the most. But interestingly enough, some of the guys who uploaded videos of the glitch were getting banned. I keep trying to tell YouTubers be careful because I've seen 2K strike channels for leaking information in the past or for uploading glitches. And so unless you're certain for whatever reason that whatever you're doing is not gonna get you a strike on your channel or banned from the game, then you gotta take some precautions, my guy. Because the second you do something that hurts their pocket and it's definitely against TOS, then they're gonna take advantage of TOS to take whatever. They're gonna hit your sh my guy. Come on, what'd you expect was gonna happen, man? Anyway, I guess they were taking one for the team because while they might have gotten some consequences for uploading the video, everybody else kind of just got away with it. There were some people unhappy with that, but at the end of the day, I think it all comes down to 2K. 2K, the reason people are so excited about a glitch to get all their badges instantly is because in most games, when I'm grinding to reach top rank or top leaderboard or whatever, it's usually a fun process. Now, it usually takes a lot of time, a lot of improvement, a lot of skill, but it's a fun process. On 2K, although you can upgrade your player on the park or on the pro-am, the best way to do it is on the My Career. Who has fun playing my career? What people usually do is they just put it on pro difficulty and they just play for hours while they watch something on their TV on the side. That's not fun. It isn't fun, period. So you either have to severely buff the type of upgrades you get playing park and pro-am or, or just nerf my career or for, for sake, you gotta do something to balance it out, man. And that's inherently a flaw with NBA 2K because if I'm playing Call of Duty and I don't like the ICR anymore, I just use a different gun. And while you still have to get attachments for that gun or whatever to get it at its best form, you can still use the gun and perform fantastically. On NBA 2K, if I wanna create a sharpshooter, you have to go to my career to get limitless range before you even think of touching the courts. Because if you're playing without your badges in the park, you're gonna get destroyed. So it almost forces you to stay on my career and grind over there. It's part of the reason why I found it refreshing last year to play on the combine because I didn't have to pay $50 to upgrade my player and spend 40 hours grinding my badges just so I can enjoy my player. I could just choose any player and experience that player. I'll say it in every single rant video because I feel like it's the easiest and most simple solution. 2K, hire more people. Because if the problem is that you don't have enough hands around to help you with things and things are going wrong because you didn't check this because you didn't have time for this, then just hire people to solve the issue. It's such a simple fix, man. Now don't get me wrong, I'm pretty impressed with the rotation of park events this year. Compared to any other year, it far exceeds it, right? Just in terms of continuous I don't even know if I want to call it content, but just keeping things fresh and different. It's definitely not good. I wouldn't argue it's good, but it's better than previous years, and that's an improvement. I genuinely believe that NBA 2K would be an infinitely better product if they didn't do yearly releases. Which sounds crazy for a sports title because that's how every sports title operates. But even the CEO of EA was talking about potentially doing a subscription model in the future with some of his sports titles. It's not a crazy concept. Release NBA 2K one time. Period. And then instead of focusing on hoarding different new features and events for the next NBA 2K title, so you can market and sell the next title, you can just drop shit in seasons. Like any any other game, every game does it. Rainbow Six does it, Call of Duty does it, 
uh, Overwatch does it, League of Legends does it, Dota does it, every single game on planet Earth, they have seasons where they release new content. Because they don't have to worry about a brand new game and testing and this and that and marketing. They don't have to do that. They just release that bitch once. And then they're like, huh? You guys wanted a battle royale? I will add that. I know it seems so left field because sports titles? Nah, that's yearly releases every single year. But for 2K, the reality is this. You can't have yearly releases of the game and also a steady flow of content throughout the year. Because what happens is if they think of some brilliant stuff and it's finished being developed in March, they're gonna hold it until September for NBA 2K20. And while that might hype up the release of NBA 2K20 because of the new feature they added, it would have been nice to get it months earlier in the game that's already out. 2K is money-making machines when it comes to microtransactions. I know they can figure out a business model equally as lucrative as the current one they're using right now. Or maybe you don't have to do that. Maybe you can still release the game every single year and just hire enough people so that you can create content throughout the year as well. With Call of Duty, they have different development teams. If I'm not mistaken, they have three development teams that work on Call of Duty, so they have three year cycles to work on each game. So even though Call of Duty releases every single year, if you hop on Blackout, in the last two weeks, they added so much stuff to the game, a new AR, a new SMG, they added new places to the map they added armor shields or plates or whatever you call it i was taken aback i was like what what is happening this is a yearly release game dropping free content and of course they have microtransactions you know how activision is right they're not much better or worse than nba 2k or ea when it comes to that but i was just i was at least appreciative that activision was able to drop new content a month after the game's launch. Gaming is not that difficult. It's actually very simple. A lot like many other industries, just look at what some of the other guys are doing in the industry and steal that to a certain extent, maybe like not to the T because then every game is gonna be the same, but steal some of the good stuff and then add some of your own good stuff. And then some people are gonna notice you did some good stuff and they're gonna steal from you. And then as a result, the gaming industry is just that much better with better content all around. Yo, you cannot convince me that it's not possible for them to do this. If you've watched the last couple 2K TV episodes, they've been hinting that they're gonna add some sort of snow into the map maybe. And so they've gotten a lot of people hyped about that, but it's, it's like, that's one thing, but like, is that all we're gonna do? Like, we get snow and, and, and that's it? No, oh my. I don't even know where this rant is going, man. I'm gonna keep it a thousand with y'all. 2K, pay very close attention. And I, I mean this very honestly. NBA 2K19, at its core, I think, is the most exciting 2K since 2K16, right? And so I know 17 and 18 wasn't much good. That's hardly a compliment. But I think at the core, you have something good here. There's a lot of good things you added to the game, but you can't let it die. You have to support it with content. And if that means you have to hire more people or get a different development team so you have two years to work on every single NBA 2K. Do whatever you have to do. But to a certain extent, like if people stop playing the game, you're also losing money. And so I know they have their player count number and it would have been valuable to me and to everyone else to be able to see that number. The game is not perfect, but it's in a decent state. And if you don't fix the issues with the game right now or make any attempt to add anything new to keep it fresh, it will die. Now, I think the park events are great, good stuff, but there's delayers winning it, every single park event. So I don't even wanna play them, cause there's no point, cause I don't delay, so I won't win. Here's my biggest fear, y'all, that 2K will never truly actualize its potential. Cause the potential really doesn't mean nothing if you don't act on it and actually try and improve the game. And I don't think it's my job to sit here and think of ideas or to tell them what to do or to brainstorm anything. Because there's people being paid to do that exact thing. They have all the numbers and information to make the correct decision. I'm not the guy for that. I'm just displaying my frustration that I think the game could be at this place, but it's not. Right now, it's right here. And it, it shouldn't be here because this is 2K19 we're talking about. It's not 2K18, the worst 2K of all time. It's not 2K17, a little bit better, but still one of the worst 2Ks of all time. It's 2K19. I said the same thing when 2K16 was out and a lot of it never really ended up going addressed. And so it kind of just never became the best 2K of all time. And I said it had the potential to do it. Right? And so 2K11 for me still has the throne. 2K19, man, make something happen, surprise us. This winter, surprise the people, drop a snow park. People be asking for the snow. Drop the park, fix the timeout glitch on Pro-Am. Go ahead, do that. When I hop on the spot, I should, I should be allowed to hop back off without glitching. Do that, fix that as well. Work on your servers. 
I shouldn't be lagging out of as many games I lag out of. Or I shouldn't have to blue screen on my PS4 every other game. It's ridiculous. I shouldn't have seven foot stretch big shooting in my face 24 seven. But hey man, if you guys take care of that, I'd be a happy guy. At the end of the day, not everyone's ever gonna be happy. So 2K can drop the best game of all time and some people still hate on it. Like 2K11, some people said that game was ass. So yeah, 2K, just like hire more people, man. That's all I gotta say. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I don't do these as much as I, I, I used to. I kinda like doing them though. Like, you know, it's like therapy for me. <laughs> I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace.